our agenda. So we're gonna go over a few HPSC updates on the organization and as well as our home performance contractor network or the HPCN. And then we're gonna have a dedicated time for Q&A and feedback just on those topics. And then we're really excited to introduce some program partner presentations today. We're going to hear from our newest partner, Van City. They're going to offer some insight on financial solutions for your business. We'll have a brief one function break before we move into our rebate program panel. And that is also going to have its own dedicated Q&A time. So there'll be a lot of opportunity to ask all your questions. Um, our event does officially wrap up at 10.30, just to be mindful of everyone's time. However, our presenters and the HPSC staff will be available up to 11 a.m. So if you want to stick around for some networking with your peers or the partners or HPSC or ask additional questions, we'll be lingering for that as well. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the content of the day. I'm going to pass things off to Joven to get us started. Perfect. Thank you, Tanya. Hello all, I'm um, Jovan Chima, Managing Director at the HBSC, and I'd like to welcome you to our 2022 virtual forum. And as Tanya suggested, we sure hope to return to in-person sessions in the very near future. And I know a lot of you are already familiar with the HBSC and our ongoing work, uh, but those who are joining us for the very first time, I would like to start with a quick overview. Next slide, please. We are a not-for-profit society that serves as the lead industry facilitators to increase the supply and demand of qualified home performance service providers by supporting market growth, capacity building, and quality workmanship here in BC. We get our guidance from a working roadmap of priorities, which was developed over multiple years with input from industry and stakeholders. Our focus is on home performance, and we suggest that it is the science and practice of building homes based on a whole home approach or the house as a system concept. Our key priority, the Home Performance Contractor Network, will be discussed in, later, discussed in detail later on during our presentation today. Now, we have a short video to further introduce the HPSC and its mandate. Introducing the HPSC, a nonprofit organization and lead facilitators for the home performance industry in British Columbia, Canada. Home performance is the science and practice of building and improving homes based on a whole home approach. We know that the house works as a system, so addressing the building envelope, mechanical systems, occupant behavior, and environmental conditions makes the home as safe, comfortable, and efficient as possible. Plus, it will stand the test of time. With the support of our funding partners, the HPSC seeks to increase the supply and demand of qualified home performance service providers by supporting market growth, capacity building, and quality workmanship. We're the first to offer a voice for the home performance industry in BC, advocating on behalf of residential retrofit contractors, manufacturers, suppliers and distributors, industry associations, and other industry leaders alike. We work alongside representatives from the HVAC, insulation, and window and door sectors, as well as with general renovators, energy advisors, utilities, and government groups. By focusing on contractor-facing initiatives, we manage to create industry engagement, collect and develop resources such as education, training, and marketing support, advocate for the whole industry, and build our home performance contractor network. There are many ways to get involved with the HPSC, so add your voice to the conversation today. Connect with us at homeperformance.ca. Perfect. Thank you, Tanya. And I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I want to take us back to our forum in year 2021. We had shared that we were working towards establishing the HPSC staff team and taking steps towards finalizing our governance structure. It has been a year of great transition for us and we're excited to share this update with you. I'll, I'll start by quickly introducing our staff team. You've already heard from Tanya Ratzlaff, our manager of strategic relations. We're also joined by Greg Bloom, our manager of industry relations. 
I'm sure a lot of you have had the opportunity to connect with Greg already. Pobali Shon Basu is a very capable coordinator. You also probably recognize a few familiar faces who have been associated with the HBSC since its inception. Ryan Coleman has stepped into the board chair role. Christine Gustafson, Murray Bond, and Peter Sundberg are staying on as our advisors. We're also joined by our new board members, Dave Lewis, Akua Schatz, Darla Simpson, and Andy Coburn, who bring a wealth of industry, capacity building, and policy advocacy related experience. We've also established two committees of the board. Our funding committee of the board comprises of our funding partners, Clean BC, BC Hydro, Portis BC, and our newest partner, Van City. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our funding partners for their continued support and participation. Our five sector councils remain active and continue to assist us in identifying sector-specific priorities and provide valuable feedback when needed. To further enable the industry to inform HPSC's work plan and to promote the house and system concept, we've established the cross-sectoral industry advisory committee which includes representation from each of our sector councils. To further discuss HPSC sector council and related priorities, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Craig Bloom. Thanks, Jovan. Um, so we're gonna to start today talking a little bit about some of the industry priorities that we've um, been in conversation with, with the various sectors. And our sectors include uh, windows and doors, HVAC, insulation, energy advisors, and renovators. So the key, some of the, some of the key priorities were to continue to implement and grow the HPCN, break down silos with other sectors, be all sector inclusive and industry supportive, work with program partners to consolidate search tools, make it easier to find certified contractors and available rebates. And I know that's a big one. We'll talk about that one uh, later on. I think the second half, we'll talk about that more. Uh, next one, please, Tanya. In terms of the windows and doors, develop advanced window and windows and door uh, training. And we'll talk about that here in an upcoming poll. Implement and enhance quality assurance protocols. On terms of the HVAC side, advocate towards a residential, residential, and I'm using that as a key phrase here, uh, retro, uh, refrigeration mechanics certification, and again, implement and enhance quality assurance protocols. In terms of the insulation, industry focus and promoting of air ceiling training and implement and enhance quality assurance protocols. And with energy advisors, identify fundamental and advanced training for EAs specific to HPCN membership and launch HPCN sector. And with renovators, much like energy advisors, identify fundamental and advanced training for renovators specific to HPCN membership, and again, launch HPCN sector. So we're gonna jump right into our poll questions. So there's three poll questions we're gonna talk about here today. So our, our ask is windows and doors, HVAC or insulation. As you go through the poll questions, try to stick to the poll that really represents your company and the industry that you represent. So starting with windows and doors, the focus is on advanced qualifications. So the sector deck, uh, council identified the need for advanced qualification. Advanced qualification for HVAC, for example, takes about 26 hours to complete. So our poll question is, what is the best format to deliver an advanced qualification course focused on application? The poll question will now come up. We hope, we think. Hey Greg, I'm just unmuting to let you know that I've launched the poll. So everyone should be able to see it on your screen. If you have any technical difficulties and you can't see it, feel free to chime in um, in the chat. The options are self-paced online, instructor-led online or other, please add your recommendations. And I do see action here in the poll, Greg. So maybe we'll wait a few more seconds. Awesome, thank you, Tanya. And we'll, after this poll, we'll, we'll review the next two, which is HVAC and insulation, but windows and doors to focus with. Yeah, and Dave, absolutely, uh, please, like we said previously, uh, focus on the industry that you are representing. So your company or your industry, um, that poll question, 
right? Stay, stay focused on that poll question. Now, if your company does HVAC installation and windows and, windows and doors, feel free to do all three, but uh, let's stay focused on just one at a time if we can. Mm -hmm. Great, so we had a slowdown, Greg, so I'm sharing the results live there. Everyone should be able to see it. Can you see them, Greg? Should I read them out loud? No, I, I can't, sorry. Go, nope, yeah, that's all good. So I'll just yep. let everyone know, um, again, hopefully you can see the results live. So we had uh, about a 50-50 split between self-paced online and instructor-led online. And then we do have a few people that are adding some comments in the chat as well. So um, just to let everyone know, this is recorded. We have these responses offline, so we'll be able to follow up with this information. So thanks for that, everyone. Awesome. Thank you, Tanya. All right, let's jump into the next poll, shall we? And the next poll focuses really around um, HVAC. So in terms of the residential retro residential refrigeration mechanic certification um, course, boy, that's a mouthful. Um, our poll question really focuses around for that type of residential refrigeration mechanic certification for single family dwelling. Oh. Sorry, Greg. It's okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> for single family, family dwelling retrofits is two years the right length for a proposed certification program. Again, if you're in the HVAC industry, this is where you want to go. But remember, it's residential retrofits. So that's the key focus here. So I know there's other programs that are longer, but residential retrofits is two years, the right length, and then the poll questions will come up. All right, so the poll's live and people are responding. Greg, I'll let you know when it slows down a bit here. Thank you. And feel free to, right? So afterwards, you know, at the end of our sessions here, if you've got additional comments on any of these poll questions, feel, please feel free to add it in the chat box. Yeah. And or we can discuss it at the end. I think we do have 30 minutes. All right, we've slowed uh, down. So I'm gonna share the results there. Okay, thank you. All right. So is two years the right length? About um, the highest amount, people said yes, it's the right amount of time. That was 46% of respondents, followed by a tie between no, it should be one year and no, it should be three years, both around 20% and then a few not sure's as well. So again, we'll follow okay. up on that as well. We see some comments coming in too. Cool, awesome, thank you. All right, in terms of our next poll, we're gonna focus on insulation. So our next uh, poll in terms of insulation, um, we're really focused on uh, promoting air sealing training. So air sealing is a vital component to house as a system approach. HPSC currently offers an air sealing and retrofits course as optional training for HPCN, and that's with all sectors, doors, windows, HVAC, everybody. So our poll question is, do you think the current air sealing and retrofits course should remain as optional or become mandatory for HPCN? And that's all HPSCN sectors. All right, so just to confirm, Greg, that poll is launched and folks are responding. You know what we really should be doing, Tanya, is during these poll questions uh, breaks, we should have the theme song from Jeopardy playing in the background. <laughs> cool. Just put the pressure on people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, responses are still coming in for this one. All right, we're slowing down. So I'm going to end the poll in five seconds here. Okay, and I'll share the results. So this is another kind of split here. We have about 30% that each say it should continue to be optional for all sectors, um, but the other 30% says it should be required for all sectors. And about 20% that says it should be required of course for the insulation sector. And then a few, Perfect. not sure. So another interesting split there for us to, right. to look over. I well, thank everybody for taking part in the poll, right? Uh, these are really our touch points. We, we have a pretty good feel where the industry is at and, and where everybody's uh, thoughts are. But, you know, these types of polls allow you guys to voice your opinion anon anon anonymously. I know I didn't say that right. I apologize. Um, but at the same time, you know, voice your opinion, right? So again, at the end, if you want to talk about this further, please feel free. Or if anybody wishes to reach out to me direct, that's okay too. 
And without further ado, I think my time is up. We'll move on to the next segment in the presentation. Awesome. Thanks so much, Craig. Yes, I'm coming back now to share a little bit about the Home Performance Contractor Network or the HPCN um, update. So to get started, we're actually going to start with another question for you. So we're really trying to keep uh, everyone on their toes here. This one's not going to be a poll question. It's going to be more of just a, a reaction. So the question is, are you currently registered in the HPCN? Or you might be a full member already. You've gone through it all. So if your answer is no, not applicable, or you're not sure, then you don't need to do anything. If you are currently registered in the HPCN or uh, you're a member, and you know how to use the Zoom reactions feature, which is shown on the screen there, then I'll ask you just to give a quick thumbs up so I can look at our participants and see how many thumbs up we have. So this is just really helpful for us to get a sense of how many people are really familiar with the HPCN, how many people might be a little more new to it so that we can either give a little bit more detail or a little bit less detail. So thank you for all of those who put their thumbs up. It looked like we have a very good chunk of folks who are already registered, um, but we also have some that aren't. So I'm going to split down the middle. I'm going to do a very, very brief overview of the HPCN. Um, for anyone, whether you are in the HPCN or not, I do want to start with a very important kind of disclaimer or explanation. And that is that the Home Performance Contractor Network, the HPCN, is not the same as the rebate programs. So we work very closely with the rebate program. Some of our program partners are on the screen here, BC Hydro, Fortis BC, and Clean BC. And we liaise with them. Um, our network is designed to be a central database of contractors that programs such as these programs by these partners can point to and say, hey, that's a, a database of qualified retrofit contractors in BC. We know that it's a part of uh, the initiatives needed to improve quality workmanship and provide a standard in the home performance industry. So we're going to point to that network and require uh, participation in that network in order for customers to participate in rebates. So we are connected, we work together, but we are distinct and separate. So we're gonna hear a little bit later today from our program partners. And if you have questions on rebate programs, um, they are here to speak to that a little bit, but we wanted to also just bring a little bit of clarification that we are an independent not-for-profit group that runs this contractor network. And we're focused on the quality assurance, qualifications, ongoing management of contracting companies and their employees, as opposed to specific projects or specific rebates. Our network is currently open to residential retrofit contractors in BC, whether you install windows and doors, heating, cooling, ventilation systems, or insulation, you can do any or all of those. And it's free to join and there's no membership fee. So we're, we're really trying to make sure that we have uh, you know, we developed this network by industry for industry. It was all developed at consultation. So we're trying to keep the opportunities and, and the doors open for folks to, to join as it fits them. Um, Greg had mentioned briefly that we are also working on launching the HPCN for energy advisors and renovators. And that's currently slated for the end of this year or early next year, as there's been some work identified for us to get done before that time. In terms of why would you want to join the HPCN, hopefully those that are already signed up know this well. We do have subsidized training available while funds last. And as I mentioned, it is a mandatory requirement for the rebate programs of our partners to participate in the HPCN. So you're really opening up so many opportunities for your customers by giving them access to those rebates. And then we also have some just general promotion sort of benefits that come along, like using our network logo, which you can see in the corner there, having your information displayed in a public search tool. There's a little snapshot of that that's promoted all across BC. And then we're also building up an exclusive net, uh, network engagement training opportunities for our members as well. And finally, in terms of how you join I'm really not going to get into this today at all. We have all of this information on our website if you are interested in participating.
but it's an application process that involves your company representative getting things started. So it's the contracting company that joins the network and then it's employees or owners of that business that complete the qualifications. And that's all sector specific. Um, we have those again detailed on our website and I'll mention that we will be sending an email to everyone who registered for this event. So if you're looking for any of the links that we mentioned today, we'll make sure that that's easily available for you. Uh, and then just wrapping up the process there, there's some documents that we require and we do have an ongoing management process. So we really wanna make sure that this network really speaks to the quality assurance that the industry has asked for and doesn't just stop at that initial sign up process. So again, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about us, we encourage you to visit us online. We just launched the HPCN last year, and we do say that it's going to be an evolving initiative. And for those that are a little bit more familiar with the HPCN, we wanted to provide some updates for you today. So you've probably seen this information maybe a few times now, and we wanted to kind of circle back and first talk a little bit about the feedback that we've been receiving since we launched the HPCN. I'm going to go through this quickly just for the sake of time. Um, one of the common concerns that has come up is the ability to find time for your employees to complete the training that's required to join the HPCN. So how we've responded to that is we do say that we need at least one supervisor or lead installer per crew that needs to be trained. And that does remain the expectation, um, sorry, the expectation. However, we also want to get you moving through this process. So we have been working with you. Greg is the manager of industry relations, is a vital resource if you're concerned about this for your company. We're really focusing on let's get one employee trained so that we can get you into that registration process and, and make sure you don't feel left behind just because you're working hard and really busy. Um, similarly, our program partners also heard that concern and decided to extend a deadline that they had for membership in the HPCN to access heat pump rebates. So that deadline is now uh, July 1st, which they had pushed on. So it's been really nice to get all of this feedback and then be able to respond accordingly and hopefully try and improve based on the information that we hear from partners and, and reg registrants. Similarly, another update. We had heard some concern about the time it was taking to complete reference checks. So we've updated our sort of internal process for that, where we found some ways to expedite the process, um, request some supplier references as a new requirement, which actually ends up helping speed the process along if they're a bit easier to get a hold of as well. And then briefly, just a few more items. We heard that some of the employee training instructions were a little confusing. So we're actually working right now to update that process. And in the coming months, we hope to see a lot more improvement there. So um, that somewhat relates to the final item on the screen as well, which is our quality installation courses for the HVAC and insulation sectors. We've also been getting some specific feedback about that training, some comments on what could be improved or some concerns if, if information is um, you know, in line with everything. So we're gathering all of that feedback as well, and we're gonna be reviewing that for corrective action. So that was a very speedy summary of the more common feedback that we've received. Certainly not a complete list. So we wanted to take this opportunity just to say we really appreciate everyone who reaches out by phone or email or through events like this to provide feedback. And we really hope that you'll keep it coming as we take all of this feedback and ideas into consideration. Before we get to our Q&A and feedback, where you can provide more of that, also just wanted to provide a few points where we similarly uh, get some frequently asked questions. So we thought we would take a moment to speak to that as well. So again, for the sake of time, I'll be pretty quick with this, but we'll be sharing all the slides after and the links to our FAQ pages as well. Uh, one of the FAQs we get is that we now have introduced the supplier reference requirement, but right now in the portal where you complete your registration, it doesn't currently provide an opportunity for you to differentiate between a supplier and a customer. So we're actually making those changes. You should see them any day now. But in the meantime, if you're wanting to do that, say later today, you can always just send us an email or you can just add it in the portal as a customer and we'll work around um, that information there. 
We also get lots of questions on where is the search tool that we speak of when we share the benefits of the HPCN. Right now, it's currently listed on the Better Homes BC website. It's at that URL there, which we'll share with everyone. And we do plan to list it on our website as well and possibly other some uh, other program partner websites in the future. So when you become a member in the HPCN, you're given access to an area that provides information on the search tool and other benefits. So when you become a member, you'll also have quick access to that as well. We get some questions on promotion. How are we promoting the network to contractors? We have been relying heavily in the last year since we've brought Greg on board to do a lot of direct outreach. So lots of calls, emails with contractors, and we're very excited to be looking at some in-person outreach opportunities in the future as well. And we also work very closely with our industry partners and stakeholders because we know that our kind of network of stakeholders is connected to many others. And so we have amazing partners that help us spread the word far and wide. And if you have a network and you would like to help us spread the word, we would be very interested in connecting and discussing that a little bit more with you. So um, please feel free to reach out on that. And in kind of the reverse side of that question, how are customers or homeowners educated, whether it's just on home performance or on the home performance contractor network, and to this, we have some, some great information to share. Um, first, we'll start by saying that the HPSC ourselves, we are contractor facing. So we support our partners and contractors themselves to educate homeowners um, rather than kind of educating homeowners directly ourselves. So I know that the Better Homes BC uh, folks, they have an energy coach hotline. The Clean BC uh, group also recently launched a new income qualified program, which we're going to hear a little bit more about. And they have a new dedicated hotline for that, where they're doing some amazing, really direct education with homeowners talking about house as a system, looking at your building envelope retrofits, explaining the purposes of uh, you know, the HPCN and, and why it's beneficial to hire a contractor from that network. So um, these are just some practical resources that, again, we'll provide all the links for so you can share those with your customers. And then we also have partners like Van City, who's going to speak in a little bit here, who does some general homeowner education, and they're a fantastic advocate in this sector. So having them on as a partner is a great opportunity for industry to give some direct feedback on ways to improve homeowner education and for us to make sure there's that conduit between industry and homeowner education. And finally, I'm just going to wrap up really quickly here with a few updates. Greg already mentioned that we're working on launching the HPCN for EA uh, Energy Advisors, that is, and renovators, uh, hopefully later in the year. And just a quick update on where we're at with those training subsidies that we mentioned. So the good news is we still have a really strong base of funding available. So we encourage you to complete all of your training, complete your registration, you do have to complete all of the training before you're eligible to request that reimbursement. So it's important that if you're banking on that reimbursement that you finish your registration. Uh, we have been seeing the demand increasing though as our registration numbers are really ballooning and folks are finishing and becoming members so they're becoming eligible. So we'll continue to provide updates throughout the year, especially as we get to some kind of critical tipping point but um, we wanted to encourage you to finish your registration to make use of that. All right, I'm gonna share one last screen before I stop talking for a bit and then we invite you to talk, which is just an update on where we're at with those numbers. So this is a snapshot of the registration across all sectors. So we're at about 550 registrants and about 120 members again across all sectors. And we thought we would also share this map as well because it will be showing up on the HPCN portal soon. And it just gives a little bit of insight to some of the ways that we categorize our registrants into the different regions of the province. We use this to help us manage outreach and focus on areas where we maybe want to see the numbers up a little bit. Um, and then also just to say that we have registrations and members across the entire province. We, there is no region on this map that isn't touched by the HPCN which is so encouraging. And we just wanna say thank you all to those that participate and really encourage you to consider where you're at and how you can better serve your customers by joining the HPCN. 
All right, I thank you so much for letting me just fly through some of those updates. We now want to take a few minutes here just to make sure that we're giving you the chance to ask your questions and provide your feedback. So I'm going to be passing this over to Jovan. I think we're just gonna end up with about six or so minutes for this section. So Jovan will moderate us through this first Q&A. Perfect, thank you for that Tanya. And uh, for this first Q&A, we'd like to open it up for questions that are related to HPSC, HPCN, or any other HPSC related priorities. I just wanna remind everybody that we will have a second Q&A later on in the session, which is purely focused on uh, program partners and rebates. So uh, open for any questions related to HPSC and HPCN. Um, we've received some questions in the chat, so I'd like to start with that first. Um, Justin McIntyre and Sue McFarlane uh, raised um, a question about uh, the refrigeration uh, mechanic certification um, that's been proposed. Uh, so I'd just like to remind everybody that um, back in May 2021, province announced 10 mandatory trades. And one of the items on that list was a trade around uh, residential refrigeration mechanic. Um, so since that, since that announcement, the HPSC is working with program partners such as BC Hydro um, to, to one, inform what this um, trade needs to look like, what the timeline needs to be. And we're also hoping to conduct some research, maybe pan-Canadian research. Um, how has this been handled outside of BC? And that research uh, we hope will serve as a reference point for government entities. Any additional questions around HPSC? Jovan, I think we might have had some hands up. Um, they might have gone down. I'm just scrolling through my list, but maybe you can take a look and I'll let you know if I see someone. Perfect. Um, so we received- oh, we have Mike with his hand up? Yeah, Mike, you have your hand up. Please unmute and ask yeah. a question. So my question is, we have a commercial refrigeration company and all our guys are all certified journeymen. And we've been doing installs for probably 30 years, 35 years. So now do we have to go out and get another ticket? And that's a very good question, Mike. I can tell you that these are the kind of things which we don't have answers for at this point because all we've had is an announcement and these are the details that will be looked at. Of course, um, like other trades in the past, we hope that there's an opportunity for grant grandfathering here. Uh, but I'd like to also mention that uh, the reason, I guess, the province stepped in to create a residential refrigeration um, mechanic certification is because the commercial ticket did not appropriately cover retrofit-related uh, realities. Uh, but your comment is very well received. That's something we're keeping in mind. We don't want it to be additional burden for those who have, who have gone through certification already. Um, so it, there's a question on the chat from Marianne and, and Kenny, I'm gonna send this over to you. Is there anywhere to get a list of existing HPCN members? Yes, the, I see those questions, that's great. So yes, just to clarify, I had mentioned briefly that the search tool is currently on betterhomesbc.ca and that it would be on our website. So just to clarify, the search tool does list HPCN members. So if anyone is familiar with the Program Registered Contractors or PRC group, you might be aware that the search tool used to list PRC members. And the PRC has now uh, transitioned to the HPCN for heat pump contractors and it will in the future for insulation. So when you go on the Better Homes website and you look in the search tool, if you see a heat pump contractor, that means that they're HPCN. If you find an insulation contractor, it means they're either HPCN or they are PRC and in the future that'll be one and the same. So that was a bit of a conscious choice made to avoid confusing homeowners with any additional lingo around the HPCN or PRC. Um, so we can maybe do a better job communicating to contractors, but that's what we mean is that the HPCN list is one and the same with that search tool. So 
hopefully that's clear, but if there's any follow-ups, let us know in the chat and we can always, um, again, make an effort to be a little more clear with that. And Tanya, maybe can you specify for, uh, for those who are asking, you know, when they bring up the list on the NBC search tool, I believe there's a column which, which clearly specifies if they're an HPCN member or not. Um, there's not a column that specifies whether they're HPCN, but the Better Homes group has added a column that specifies which programs they're eligible for, which is really handy. So again, if you are a heat pump contractor and you are in the HPCN, you'll just show up there. So again, we can look at making our language more clear so contractors can understand that. And we welcome your feedback if you think it's worthwhile communicating kind of the whole bigger picture to homeowners, then that's great feedback we're very open to as well. Perfect, thank you. We have a question from David Coulson. Um, as a renovate, when can I sign up to the HPCN? Um, and David was previously trained power, uh, power smart contractor as well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest Greg, uh, if he can provide details around this and maybe outline options for David um, around windows and doors and insulation that he could, he could participate on now. Yep. Hi. Sorry. Yep. I'm muting and, and turning on my video. Um, yeah. So if, if anybody has any questions about the registration process for doors and windows, don't hesitate to reach out to me direct too, right? Um, and I did mention in the chat box too that one of the cool new tools, cool new tools, good grief, um, that's on the Better Homes BC website is windows and door contractors is now listed. So um, you know, as a window and door contractor, you haven't had that opportunity, that's now there. So, um, Joven, I'm not sure if that properly answered the question. Um, yeah, I just wanted to specify to David that David, a lot of renovators who actually do windows and door installation and do insulation work are already registered with the HPCM. So that option is open to you. Yeah. But, a, but a dedicated renovator pathway is something that we're looking at for later on this year or earlier next year. It is, and, and you know, in the interim, if you do install windows and doors, and if you do do insulation, I said do do, um, as a renovator, um, it's okay to get started, become a member of the HPCN under windows and doors and or under installation. And when the day comes, which you know, hopefully you will be uh, Q3 or Q4 of this year, maybe 2023, that we're finally able to launch the uh, renovation sector, um, you know, it's easy to slide over because you would have, probably have already done a lot of the training that's going to be required. So uh, now's a good time to get started. Uh, I wouldn't wait. If you can do it, do it. Perfect. Thank you for that, Greg. And just keeping an eye on time. Steve, I know you hand your, have your hand up. I, I will request you to please enter your question into the chat. We're going to have to move forward with the agenda, just given the time. Um, next up, we have a short presentation from our partners at Van City. It's focused on financial <coughs> And I'd like to turn it over to um, Emily and Puneet. Thank you so much, Jovan. Um, hopefully all of the slides transferred over because it's looking different, but that's okay. So uh, it's my pleasure to be here today. Um, my name is Emily Pearson. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm joining from the unceded territories of the Squamish, Musqueam, and um, Tsleil-Waututh peoples today, known as Vancouver. Um, and my colleague uh, Puneet is also on the on the call with us, and um, he'll be sharing some of these talking points with me today. So uh, you can head into the next slide. I'm going to just move right move right along. But Ben City is really thrilled to be partnering with the HPSC. Um, which was just brokered this year. And there's really strategic reasons for why we feel like the HPC is so, um, such a community is such a strong partner for Van City. And uh, I'll provide some examples of that. If you're not familiar with Van City, uh, we are a member owned cooperative credit union. Uh, we are a financial force for change. So we serve the financial needs of our members and work with members and community partners to affect systemic change and address the big problems where we live, the climate change, um, and massive inequality being some of the two biggest ones. We have over uh, 550,000 member owners uh, and our trade region, our service region is Metro Vancouver, Fraser Valley, um, Victoria, sort of the southwest, southern part of Vancouver Island, uh, although we do have a, a branch up in Alert Bay as well. Uh, and so these are all within the territories of the Squamish and uh, Kwakwakwak people. We have about 30 billion in assets um, and assets under administration. That's fine, yeah, thanks, go ahead. So um, we just new, announced our new vision and value statement actually, which we're 
which is really exciting. Um, it's a, our fan city, our vision is to be a trans, is a transformed economy that protects the earth and guarantees equity for all. So this is a pretty dynamic statement to be making, um, but we feel that the way that uh, our history has led us to this point and the way we, we want to move forward, um, this is what, want, what will guide us. So we use our assets to improve financial well-being of members, uh, and we also work to develop healthy communities that are socially, economically, and environmentally sustainable. We head to the next slide. Um, we've been around for over 75 years. So some of these first that we've, um, we're really proud of are some of the first socially responsible mutual funds. Um, we were the first to donate a portion of credit card profits to um, local sustainability initiatives, which happens through our Enviro Visa card and the Enviro Fund. We had the first low interest loan for purchasing um, electric vehicles, the first um, low interest loan for energy efficiency home renovations. Um, we've also were the first to go carbon neutral um, in North America as a financial institution in 2008. And all the investment funds that we manage now are fossil fuel free. So uh, this is just some clear uh, markers of why we operate the way we do and the values that drive us. You can head to the next slide. So um, in our continuation for um, demonstrating leadership in transitioning to a clean and fair economy, uh, we've made five climate commitments. And I'm just going to talk about two of those quickly today as they relate to this conversation. So the first is that we are going to be net zero by 2040. And that means that any anything that we finance in our loans and mortgages, we're calculating the emissions from that. And we uh, are committed to bringing those emissions down to zero by 2040. If we can't get quite to zero, then we'll use some offsets, but overall it's, it's about reduction. Uh, the next commitment, next slide, is to finance an equitable climate transition. So uh, the solutions for climate are actually fairly clear. We see them now, but to achieve those and not, address, not to um, perpetuate inequality in our community is actually the greater challenge. So we're really focused on working uh, on financial and social inclusion to help people who are most affected by the climate emergency and to transition to a cleaner, more sustainable community. Next slide. Okay, so what I'm gonna dive into now is um, the really the what, like the proof points behind all of this, uh, you know, exciting uh, vision values and, and really our history. So the to get to net zero, uh, the most emissions that we have do come from our mortgage portfolios, both from our residential and our commercial mortgage portfolios. So working on home retrofits and building retrofits is a key priority for us. Uh, so we are looking at a variety of different solutions, programs, partnerships that can help to achieve that. So um, the current product that we do have in market is the PlanetWise Renovation Solutions. And this has been around for a few years, um, although we have rebranded it recently. And what it is, is a lower interest financing available for homeowners who are doing um, home energy upgrades. There's not a definitive list, but it can include heat pumps, insulation, windows and doors, solar, air sealing, um, you know, electrical upgrades to facilitate those would also be acceptable, appliances, things like that. So there's a term loan, a credit line, and a credit line mortgage. Um, and uh, overall, the processes for you know, applying for these are, are similar to other traditional financing products. But um, this is something that we are seeing great uptake with. And we know um, as you, know, you, you speaking to your clients out there in market that this could be a tool um, that could certainly support your clients in being able to um, afford some of the, the updates that they need to make. However, next slide. We did a lot of research around um, what other barriers um, homeowners are facing when looking at how to do renovations in their home and retrofits. And this information is likely not going to be new to you, but we really wanted to get behind um, some of the other motivations and, and barriers and pain points that homeowners face. So some of the insights that came out of this research that we did this last winter, we did some qualitative interviews and then we did a very large um, survey study with 750 um, individuals in our, in our region. So we found that comfort obviously beats emissions as a motivation factor. So comfort, functionality are really what's driving um, our members to make changes. There's also confusion around um, energy efficiency versus energy as source. So even um, individuals who felt like they were making environmentally minded choices um, had some confusion around um, where energy efficiency versus um, the energy source came into play. We found that there's a great need to boost the motivation of homeowners to decarbonize through education, regulation, incentives. We also need to make it much easier for homeowners to collect information about their home. 
and have that come at a timely and hopefully early enough um, place so that they can make informed decisions at those you know, difficult times when their furnace has, has um, stopped working or when they're ready to make um, some larger renovation choices. So homeowners do need specific information about the tangible steps they can take. And we know that contractors are a key source of that information and can have great influence over projects and decisions. And this is why our partnership with HPSC is, um, is really important to us because the, the, the training and the support provided to industry um, is unique in Canada, to be honest, right now, and is just so important as we look to make this transition to a, a low carbon economy. But then our position in, in having these direct relationships with our members and how we can use financial tools also makes this a great, um, a great marriage between the two of us. So given these insights that we found, we decided that we needed to do something to support our members. So next slide. We've launched, or, or sorry, or very close to launching uh, PlanetWise Home Advice. So this is a service for members to get personalized supports for home energy improvements. It's a partnership with City Green. So uh, members will be able to talk to one of their home energy experts, uh, talk about the motivations and pain points in their home, um, look at how to, they can start to plan for some of the things that might need to happen. Um, they can also get support looking at different quotes, understanding their energy evaluation. Um, so it's a pretty fulsome um, experience that we hope to provide to members. Uh, so this is our way to sort of support our membership and not just saying, Financing is what you need, but more that good information is also what you need to make informed choices. So this will be launching uh, in the next several weeks and can also be a tool that, um, you know, yourselves might be able to, to use to um, sort of pre-screen, I suppose, some members if you wanted to, or, or customers, if they've, you know, they've talked to somebody, then they're going to be a little bit more informed about what they need in their home and, and ready to move on it, which will be hopefully a good um, way to keep the pace going on a very, very busy um, work schedules that everybody, and the demand that is facing all of you right now. So next slide. Okay, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague Puneet um, to sort of talk a little bit about um, the other half of the work that we do at Ben City. Thank you so much, Emily. Thank you uh, for uh, wrapping it up really nicely uh, about Ban City. Um, thank you, HPSC, for uh, having uh, us. Uh, as Emily uh, alluded before, that we um, we have many uh, products uh, um, in regards to the plant wise uh, under this uh, under under this umbrella, uh, right from uh, deconstruction to business loans, so that it enables the contractors, uh, specifically yourselves. Uh, to do more what you're doing right now um, and also enable uh, the homeowners with their uh, education and just um, having that having that knowledge that yes I can do I can do energy upgrades uh, in my house and uh, what are the options uh, next slide please um, we know uh, COVID uh, hit small business really bad uh, but um, this is uh, the survey from uh, uh, the Ca Canadian Federation of Independent uh, Businesses. Um, it just shows resiliency with our small businesses um, that uh, they are really able to adapt. Uh, many businesses have adapted their operations um, to cater to COVID and everything. So um, it's it's really important sometimes um, to know what the financing needs will be, especially in case of uh, COVID or some other um, uh, situations uh, with the business. Um, next slide, please. Um, Vansity, um, I have been working with Vansity for almost 12 years. And um, I particularly enjoy Vansity because um, it's different than any other lender um, in, in the vicinity of what they're doing. Um, because they have a huge gray area where we can we can really make things work. We can really look at the big picture. We we are beyond we are beyond numbers. Although numbers are important for us, just like any other financial institution, but the gray the big gray area enables us to do all these things. Our focus is just not um, getting profits and becoming really big in a in a, in a small uh, um, in, in a lesser amount of time. Our focus is to grow our community, uh, and that's what that's what that's what I love about Van City. Um, yeah. So next slide, please. Um, we have different products, um, same products as any other financial institution will have under the sun. 
um, but we are really focused in um, the lower mainland of BC. Um, as I said before, we are not, our focus is not to increase our profits by, to, to grow bigger. Um, our main focus is to share our profits, share our wealth. 30% of our profits go back to our communities in different ways. Um, you can all see it on About Us um, uh, on Van City. And they're really, organically, you can really feel what's going on um, uh, when you see that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, microloans is um, something that Van City came up with um, uh, about 15, uh, 17 years ago, uh, which is really a tool for uh, a startup businesses um, or, um, or someone who's new to the country or someone who's um, going back to a different um, profession and needs um, uh, some sort of boost. Um, it ha it's, a, it's a big umbrella of different, different products and different uh, options that we can provide to small business owners, um, retail members, everybody else. Uh, but it's, it's really how you make it, uh, how, what, what you provide to the financial institution to make things work. So what I'm saying is everything and anything is possible, not just with um, like, it's not black and white. Um, you can, you can, um, you can uh, contact me um, or any member of our, uh, any um, staff member of Fancity uh, to discuss uh, the options available for if you are a small business owner or something else. So yeah, uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, this, um, um, uh, um, the business emissions calculator will be launching in uh, sometime later in 2022. And, um, um, Emily, what exactly does that calculator does? Thanks. Um, so yeah, we, as part of our commitment to net zero, we are looking to better understand the emissions of our members. And we also know that um, members getting a better grasp of where their greatest sources of emissions are can help them to prepare for some of the future policy changes, increasing carbon tax, um, and just uh, in general, hopefully look for other cost saving opportunities. So a business emissions calculator is something that we're going to be launching free for our members um, so that they can easily input the different aspects of their business and get a sense of where their emissions are coming from. And then the other resource that we've talked about here is the PlanetWise um, Business Guide for Climate Action. So this is a free resource on the Van City site, and it's a really thorough um, look at way, different ways that a business can reduce their emissions. There's some case studies in there, um, some other opportunities to, to look to different partners that can support. So these are um, just some of the ways that we're looking to support business as in addition to you know, our core services, as Puneet has mentioned. So I put our emails into here. Um, I didn't mention it earlier, but Puneet is one of our small business advisors. <laughs> and uh, so he is uh, equipped to handle any conversations around um, you know, lending and financing um, that a bit small businesses may need. And then if you have questions around PlanetWise or the upcoming um, PlanetWise advice service, or other ways that you feel that uh, Van City could better support um, you know, your industry, um, please reach out. We're always happy to chat. My colleague, Michelle Bonner, is also on the line here and um, can also facilitate that. So really appreciate um, being part of this conversation. And you know, we hope that you'll be hearing more from us um, in the coming year and years as we uh, look to deepen this partnership with HPSC. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Emily, and thank you, Puneet. Uh, thank you for outlining your programs and, and some of the important steps that you're taking around climate action and transition to low carbon initiatives. And it's easy to see why our, um, um, why our mandates overlap. Um, so in the interest of time, I will request uh, everyone to please uh, drop your questions in the chat if you have any questions for Emily or Puneet, and we'll make sure they're answered. And uh, Tanya, I'll turn it over to you to um, announce a quick break. We are now going to move into our final presentation section, followed by our final Q&A. So we're going to be hearing from our rebate program panel. I'm going to let them introduce themselves more completely, but we'll have representatives from Clean BC from the province, BC Hydro, and Fortis BC to answer your rebate program questions. They're going to start with a short presentation and then we'll have lots of time for Q&A. And just a reminder that our event does officially wrap up at 10.30 if you need to hop off. But for those who are available to stay on up to 11, we will have additional kind of overtime Q&A section. 
So with that, I'm going to pass it off to our program partners to introduce themselves and go through their presentation. Thanks, Tanya. Hi, everybody. My name is Kirsty Pappas, and I'm the Business Development Manager at BC Hydro. And today, myself and our program partners from Fortis BC, um, so Sarah will be, Herb will be presenting, and Grant Mooney from the province of BC um, will be presenting as well. And we're really going to try and give you um, a pretty high level overview of the rebate programs available in the BC market. Um, the information we're reviewing today won't be um, spe sector specific, but as Tanya had gone over earlier on, um, there will be time for some questions. Um, there was a lot of questions I noticed about uh, just where the, the uh, directory listing is for um, contractors, for HPCN members. Uh, so Grant has dropped the URL into the chat, and there um, there is also um, a directory located on BC Hydro's site as well. So um, as PRC is still in market as well for insulation, um, there's kind of two, two listings there, but one place that customers and contractors can go to to check it out. So we'll ensure to follow up with, with contractors as well if you have any further questions. So the province of BC, um, BC Hydro and Fortis BC, we all work together to bring more than $15,000 in rebates um, on retrofit upgrades for residential customers in the province of BC. And when you can stack uh, the federal government's uh, Greener Homes Grant on top of the provincial rebates, it's really a great time for customers to do retrofit upgrades, working with con uh, qualified contractors as yourselves. Next slide, Tanya. So our goal as program partners is to, provide, to re provide an integrated offer that helps host households reduce greenhouse gas emissions and energy use by making retrofit upgrades in space heating, um, water heating, and within the building envelope. Um, you know, we try and ensure by working together that the offers that are in market are as streamlined as and aligned as possible. Um, you know, really in an effort to make it as easy for you and your customers um, as we can. Next slide, Tanya. So the Better Homes and Home Renovation Rebate Program is available for British Columbians who meet some general program eligibility. And then of course, there's specific um, criteria depending on, um, on the upgrade that they're making. So, um, you know, the, the rebates are available for British Columbians who are either a Fortis BC or BC Hydro residential customer, or um, they live in a participating municipality. So on top of the rebates that the province, Fortis and BC, BC Hydro offer, um, specific municipalities also offer top up rebates um, uh, for a certain amount and for a certain time period until funding um, is spent. The customers must customer must have electricity, natural gas, oil, wood, or propane as their primary heating. Um, and depending on the upgrade they make, their um, primary heating um, will really determine who their uh, rebate will be coming from. Uh, but we do have an, uh, a one integrated application form. So uh, no matter where they apply to, uh, the funding will come or the rebate will come back to them if they qualify. Uh, homes must be 12 months or older, um, and a customer must live in an eligible dwelling type. So that can be a single family detached dwelling, um, inclu including legally um, secondary suites, a mobile home with a on a permanent foundation, um, and a row townhouse or duplex. At this time, our retrofit rebates um, aren't offered to customers living in apartments or condos. In, for the provincial offers, participants don't need to register in advance for our, um, our rebates and they don't need to perform a pre and post enter guide assessment. So those two last points are only for the Federal Greener Homes Grant Program um, and Grant Mooney will um, talk through a kind of high level of those details um, in a little bit. Uh, so now we'll, I'm going to pass it on to Sarah, who will go over some further details on uh, the programs. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Herb. I'm the program manager um, with Fortis BC for residential retrofits. Um, so this is just a high level overview of the rebates that are available through the program. So we do have up to $5,500 in incentives for insulation, up to $2,000 for fenestration, 
Um, for heat pumps, it's up to 6,000. And for natural gas heating equipment, including furnaces, boilers, and combination systems, it's up to 1,200. And then for water heating, it is up to 1,000. Um, and as mentioned, the primary space heating system for the home can determine who is providing the rebate for the customer. Next slide, please. Um, so in terms of contractor requirements, there are specific contractor requirements for uh, individual upgrades. Um, so across the board, uh, we do require a licensed contractor with a valid BC business license for the applicable trade. So heat pumps, insulation, fenestration, gas heating equipment, and water heaters. And then uh, we start to get into the HPCN requirement, and that applies to heat pumps. So and insulation is upcoming as well. So for heat pumps as of July 1st, um, that will be a requirement uh, for heat pump rebates um, across the program. And then um, the intention is that come fall, winter 2022, that will be applicable to the insulation rebate as well. And then many of you may be familiar with the PRC membership that is currently in place for insulation. Next slide, please. And then I'm just going to quickly touch on the Fortis BC Income Qualified Program. Uh, so we do offer enhanced rebates for qualifying furnaces and boilers, connected thermostats, water heaters, as well as heat pumps in our electric service territory. Um, so that's parts of the Okanagan and Kootenays. Um, further program details can be found on our website. And these um, upgrades are aligned with the requirements through the uh, Clean BC Better Homes and Home Renovation Rebate Program. And so that does include the upcoming requirement for HPCN membership for heat pumps that's coming in uh, July 1st. Um, and that's it for me. So I'm gonna pass it on to Grant. Thanks, Sarah. Um, I'm gonna be speaking on the Income Qualified Program. So the uh, Clean BC Income Qualified Program is an energy efficiency and electrification program that offers enhanced rebates to income qualified households for energy saving upgrades. Eligible upgrades include heat pumps, heat pump, water heaters, insulation, and windows and doors, very similar to our normal program. The program offers high value rebates that can cover 60 or 95% of the retrofit cost, depending on the household's income, up to maximum values per upgrade. The Income Qualified Program is a contractor-led retrofit program, meaning the rebates are paid directly to the contractor, with the equivalent amount being deducted from the participant's invoice. This will help reduce the upfront cost for participants. We're not gonna get into the details of all the requirements of the program, but we do encourage you to visit the, um, the rebate webpage at betterhomesbc.ca forward slash rebates forward slash income qualified. Contractors interested in participating in the program need to become HPCN members and become trained and registered with the income qualified program. Please reach out to the program at IQP contractor support at betterhomesbc.ca to become trained and registered in this program. Next slide. The Greener Homes Program, as you all know, is a federal program. They offer up to $5,000 per home, plus a $6,000 rebate for your Energuide assessments. This is a separate rebate process administered by the Government of Canada. The rebate requirements and values differ from the provincial offers and to access those rebates, you do need to make sure you meet the requirements of both programs independently. Additionally, I would like to add that those qualified product lists and requirements do differ. So make sure you're meeting those requirements and referring to each program's individual qualified product lists. Their programs are available to all Canadians living in eligible homes, such as single-family single dwellings, mobile homes, row townhouses, and multi-unit. The difference between our two programs there is that they do allow um, renters to access funding for that program as well, I believe. Uh, next slide. Program differences and opportunities. Uh, these are some key differences between the provincial programs offered by the utilities and the province 
and the federal program. So as um, Kirsty mentioned earlier, for the provincial programs, you do not need to register in advance. The federal program does need homeowners to register in advance of upgrades. The provincial offers, you do not need Energuide assessments to participate in those offers. Where the federal program, you do need to get a pre and post Energuide assessment. The two offers, both from the province and from the the federal government can be stacked, meaning homeowners can apply to both programs independently as long as they meet the requirements of both programs. A note there is that the stacking of the rebates cannot exceed the total value of the installation. So the invoice uh, cost is the max value you can receive between the two programs. Both programs do require licensed contractors and obviously the upgrades through the Better Homes program do require some HPCN membership or PRC membership, such as uh, currently installation rebates to have that requirement. And in July 1st, uh, heat pump upgrades will require that. The federal program does require you to be a licensed contractor, but they do not require HPCN membership. Um, that's all I have on the program at this time, and I'm gonna pass it back to uh, Kirsty to finish this up. Thanks, Grant. Um, so we will have time to ask questions. Um, what's the, the chart up here is just some contact information that uh, contractors can use if you have any questions. So um, the Better Homes Energy Coach is available during the week um, via email or phone for any questions that you or your customers have. Um, and then uh, one of us who have spoken today um, are always available via email. Um, I know there's been some questions in the chat just around notification of any program changes. Um, you know, we really try and give as much notice as possible in terms of qualification changes, changes that are being made. Um, we try and give at least six months notice. Um, if funding is going to end, which it's not anything that I've seen in the future, but uh, you know that is our. We are aware of supply chain challenges in the industry, so we'll give as much notice as possible if that does happen in um, in the future at all. Um, and I think that's about it. So maybe we can. Um, oh, actually, I will notice just if you're not receiving any email updates from us or. Um, for, or from HPSC as they do pass on our updates, please send um, an, uh, an email to one of the three partners and we'll make sure you're added to the list. Tanya, did you wanna, uh, were Perfect. you gonna? Oh, Jovan's good, okay. Thank you, Kirsty. Um, and, and thank you to our program partners uh, for their presentation. I can tell you that uh, Prior to the session, when we um, sent out a poll, um, there was an overwhelming demand for, for such a panel and, and for an opportunity for everybody to ask questions around rebates. Now, I know a lot of questions in the chat have already been answered, uh, but this would be an opportunity to ask questions either directly, please raise your hand, or um, if you could uh, drop your question in the chat. Um, we have a question from Tom in the chat. Uh, Tom's asking if he starts a heat pump installation before July 1, but not yet on the list of contractors. Will my customers still receive the rebate? Sorry, just coming off of mute to jump in on, on this question. Uh, the answer is yes. So um, it's as of July 1st invoice date that you need to be an HPCN member for your customers to receive a heat pump rebate. So if you start that uh, before July 1st, uh, the customer has six months to apply and um, they'll be eligible to receive their rebate. But we encourage you to become an, an HPCN member. Thank you, Carrie. Um, we also have a question, just a confirmation uh, that Patrick is seeking HPCN is not required for the HRRP for Windows as of yet. I think, Carrie, that goes to you as well. Yeah, I feel like all these questions might come to me. Um, uh, that is uh, confirmed. It's not required yet, but it's something that we uh, may be seeking to do in the future. So again, encouraging contractors to become part of uh, the HPCN uh, network. Thank you. 
Um, next, Janet, I see you have your hand up. Please unmute yourself and ask a question live. Oh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, HPCN. And um, my question is for the Clean BC program rebates. Um, we were actually um, HPCN registered for um, BC, and um, we are PRC member, um, not affiliate, not fully member yet, but we are experienced um, when, uh, in heat pump installation. Now, our question is, especially with the municipality top up in the city of Vancouver, um, we are primarily gas heating contractors, but we've been installing heat pumps. Um, we have approved installations and um, uh, uh, how to say this? Um, we are a qualified contractor installing heat pumps. Now, based on our experience um, when a homeowner, uh, they, when they change into full electric heat pumps, and um, they don't need, uh, they don't need to, how to say this? They don't need to upgrade their service. Like their current electric load can accommodate what uh, the existing load and um, the new heat pump. The city of Vancouver, in their bulletin, uh, we cannot reach out to them. It's so hard. Their current bulletin is 2019, and it is saying uh, they are requiring an electrical permit. So now our question is that this will apply to those households that their current load can accommodate the new installation of heat pump. Um, thank you for that, Janet. Uh, I am. Uh, would anybody from BC Hydro be able to answer this? Or I know we don't have participants from City of Vancouver today. Hey, Jovan, um, Grant from the province here. I, th that's a pretty detailed question about City of Vancouver permitting requirements. Janet, I, th I think it'd be best if you can email me directly. We've, we've discussed, talked before, uh, betterhomesbc at gov.bc.ca. And I will reach out to the city of Vancouver and get answers for you uh, offline. Thanks for the question, though. Thank you so much. And also to add with that grant, um, we are decommissioning their gas um, connect. Uh, what is that? Their gas system. So we understand if we have to decommission, we have to apply for a gas permit also. So um, we just wanted to make sure that we understand better and to give that information, especially to Vancouverites and what to complete before we can proceed on to the work. That's great. Yeah, and we, we appreciate the attention of the permitting through the municipality. And um, I'll be able to connect you with somebody at the city of Vancouver to help you out. Thank you. Thank you Perfect. so much. Thank you, Janet, for that detailed query. Thank you, Grant. Uh, Mike, I see you, you have your hand up. Please unmute and ask a question. So my question is, if they're going to mandate having a ticket for household or home residential installation, is there going to be permitting required for that? And will there be inspections to make sure that they're following through with best installation practices? Because you can have all the tickets you want and unless there's some way to enforce it, it doesn't mean anything. It's just another course that people have to take. And Mike, were you referring to City of Vancouver's mechanical certification or are you referring to the provincial announcement around? The, the provincial announcement. Correct. And, and Mike, you know, that's the kind of feedback we're seeking. Uh, we're still early on in the process. And from HPSC's perspective, uh, we'd like to make sure that it's a, it's a closed loop process uh, where there is learning apprenticeship and then leads to um, regular I don't like to use the word policing, but uh, policing and inspections as well. Um, I, I mentioned in the chat earlier that we will keep our sector council members and other HVAC sector members who are interested, uh, we'll keep them posted on any research that we conduct and any outcomes of that research so that you have an opportunity to at least review and provide feedback before it is submitted to the province. Um, we have a question in the chat from Kevin McGuire, and Grant, I think this question uh, will go to you. Do homes that are rented to full-time long-term rentals 
qualify for rebates, grants as their primary home tenants. Um, I know you ha you've had this detail in your presentation as well, Grant. Yeah, hi, Kevin. Yeah, this is going to really depend on the program. Uh, every program is, uh, is slightly different and the income qualified program or the Clean BC Better Homes program do, do offer um, rebates in, in different ways. Um, the federal program, I, I do believe we should you should follow up with them and check with them directly. I can try and get that information for you. The, the Clean BC Better Homes program and, and home renovation rebate program pay the re rebates to the utility account holder. Um, generally, the upgrade is done by the homeowner. And so there's a utility account consent form allowing the homeowner to get that update done. Um, but I do believe the tenant can do that. Carrie, can you jump in there if you, can you confirm that for me? Yeah, yeah, you, you were so close, Grant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> is that uh, the homeowner, uh, if the bill is not in their name, they do need to sign off on the utility, the, the renter needs to sign off on the utility account holder consent form if the bill is in the renter's name, and then the homeowner can access the rebates that are available um, because the rebate is between, as Grant said, the uh, utility account holder um, and the program partner. Thank you, Kerry. Um, we have a question from Glenn Cheatham from Kamloops uh, suggesting that there is interest in dual fuel heat pumps in their market. However, the understanding is that dual fuel heat pumps are often not qualified for clean BC incentives as they do not have an AHRA uh, number unless both furnace and heat pumps are from the same manufacturer. Um, so Grant, any chance you can comment on that or? Yeah, th this is a pretty in-depth question and answer and, and it's been really analyzed and I don't wanna get into the details of this too deep, but even though new furnaces are being installed, when they are matched with the with a heat pump that have they, they have not been tested with, we, we cannot rely on the outcomes of how that heat pump will operate. And as an example, you guys all know this, the HVAC contractors on the call, if, if a variable speed heat pump is installed with a single stage furnace, even if it's new, the communication board between the furnace and the heat pump will often make the heat pump operate in single stage. It won't allow even the variable speed actions of the heat pump to operate as they should. And the efficiencies and outcomes of that heat pump will be affected. So if the HRI lists the heat pump as a 10 HSPF, we can't rely on that unless the units are all tested together. And that's why we have that requirement for the system to be tested together. Um, this change is really being done as well because of some feedback we've been getting from homeowners where they've come through our program attached a heat pump onto a furnace and they haven't been getting the energy efficiencies that they've wanted because their current furnace is really making the heat pump operate in an inefficient manner. So we've added this to really ensure the homeowner is going to get long-term efficiencies out of their system that are guaranteed and tested through the HRI testing system. Long answer, sorry. <laughs> So thank you, Grant. Uh, so I'm getting a couple of questions based on what you had shared earlier, just a confirmation from Annie Knights. So a tenant can get an upgrade and pay for it themselves if they are the utility account holder. Correct. Yeah, that's right. Perfect. Um, Tom is asking, so does HPCN actually do site visits to confirm best practices on the installation? Um, Tom, at this point, we do not conduct um, any site visits. Uh, our program partners, BC Hydro and Ford SPC, continue to conduct site visits. Um, we do have a detailed um, contractor management protocol, which we, which we call our quality assurance criteria, which we're also launching now that we have a large number of contractors that are full members. And that criteria will look at um, other options aside from inspections as well, it'll, it'll look at ensuring that your training accreditation is kept up to date, your business requirements are kept up to date, and we'll also define mechanisms 
um, where we work with contractor regarding um, repeated customer issues and whatnot. So we will be launching that um, within the next few weeks. Um, Steve, I see you have your hand up. Please unmute and ask a question. Hey, good morning, gang. Uh, this message is for Grant and Clean BC. Uh, Grant, on the first draft of the PST tax on the fossil fuel, uh, it was written with the understanding that the contractor charged the end user the PST during the installation of the equipment. Can you tell us why Clean BC still continued to defend the new tax after learning that we didn't charge the PST? And with the other concerns that industry and contractors had for the tax, why was um, Clean BC still pushing that? Hey, Steve. Um... Thanks for the feedback. You know, we, we've talked a, a bit in the past about this topic. Um, as you know, the PST tax on fossil fuel equipment was completed and is being managed by the Ministry of Finance, not by the Ministry of Energy Mines, which runs the energy efficiency programs. We are involved with them in that offer slightly, but I'm gonna say at an arm's length, we have been providing them with the feedback from industry as we get it. And that includes your feedback, feedback from tech, uh, HRAI and the sector councils that are, are within the industry. And the Ministry of Financing is working at trying to do their best to get the communication channels and questions clear and trying to more focus on the relationship between a distributor and manufacturer to a contractor as opposed to the contractor to a homeowner. So, you know, I would like to apologize for them, but that is outside of our scope of work and they are working at clearing up those channels. Um, I'm going to leave it there and, you know, anything further, you can reach out to me directly as we've been, as we, as we've been talking. Thanks, Grant. Yeah, I did talk with um, your team leader, Catherine Muncaster, who sat on that uh, advisory board. And um, when I talked to her after the uh, tax was released, she wasn't even aware that we didn't charge PST. So I think that whole team that came up with the tax didn't even realize that going forward. So a um, lack of consultation with industry definitely happened here. Yeah, fair enough. And once again, thanks for the feedback. Um, we're working hard to clear the, that communication up. And uh, of course, you know, we want to make sure that things are not only well understood by you, but well understood by the customer as well as these changes, even though it doesn't affect them on their invoice, it does affect them with their total costing. So, you know, we'll, we'll get this cleared up and I'll continue to work with the Ministry of Finance to get clear answers. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you for that grant and thank you, Steve. Just looking at the time here, we're going to move towards wrapping up, but we'll take two quick questions. We'll start with May's question in the chat, uh, asking if there is going to be one site that we can apply for rebate for both for the BC and BC Hydro rebates. So Carrie, Erica, any, any details? Yeah, uh, the application that's hosted on bchydro.com does accept um, both Fortis, um, well, I should say all rebate, all BC rebate program applications. So um, if you're applying for Fortis uh, rebates, clean BC rebates and BC Hydro rebates, you can apply for them in all in one application form there. If, if you have a customer, though, that is just applying for just a Fortis rebate, I would encourage you to go to the Fortis BC site and have your customer um, complete their application there because it is much quicker. Um, otherwise, there's some transfer of information between um, to get the rebates processed. Um, but yeah, I would recommend that if you have an application that has multiple upgrades on it, that um, you come to the BC Hydro site and fill out your application there. Perfect. Thank you, um, Carrie. Sorry, and just to jump in there and add to what Carrie said, if they are a Fortis BC electric customer and they're doing multiple upgrades, gas and electric, we would recommend they apply through the Fortis PC uh, website as well. Thank you. Um, and maybe we'll take the final question here from Thomas. Thomas, you have your hand up. Please unmute and ask a question. Um, out in the Kootenai area, a lot of 
those are places that I've come across only have 100 amp services. Um, now they do have electric furnaces, but they do want the heat pump. Now, does is there a, a rebate that allows them to upgrade their electrical panel as well? Hi, okay. Thomas. Yep. I can answer that, Jovan. Um, if the customer is fuel switching from pro propane oil or natural gas to a heat pump, we do reply, uh, supply a $500 electric service upgrade top-up rebate. And that is, they can only access that rebate if they are installing a heat pump or a heat pump water heater when converting from fossil fuel. We assume that if they're coming from baseboard to a heat pump, they have lots of room in their panel as they will be likely using less amperage than their baseboards were using. So they are not required in that situation. I'll Thank drop, you, I'll drop yeah. a, I'll, sorry, I'll just, I'll drop a link to that rebate in the chat as well, Thomas, thanks. Perfect, thanks. Thanks, Brent. Uh, Tanya, I'll turn it over to you for a formal wrap up and also um, an invitation to those who wanna stay back for an additional 30 minutes to get their questions answered. Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks, Joven, and a big thank you to our rebate panel and once again to Van City for joining us today. We do, again, just want to respect everyone's time. We know you're busy, so if you are happy with uh, the questions and answers you've been able to be a part of and want to drop off, we will continue recording the rest of our time this morning. Anyone who's registered, whether you attended or you know of someone who wasn't able to attend, will receive an email please check your spam folders as sometimes our emails do end up there if you don't hear from us. So we just left our contact information on the screen, but you'll get that by email as well. To anyone that has to drop off, thank you again so much for your time and your great interactions with us today. And we look forward to continuing to hear from you uh, in the coming months together. For those that are able to stay on, we're just gonna move into a, a little more of a casual, kind of networking or extended Q&A time right up to 11 a.m. So our partners have graciously made themselves available to stick around. So Joven will continue moderating any lingering Q&A that we have. You can continue to raise your hand if you would like to unmute yourself. Uh, if there's interest, we have breakout rooms available. Uh, so if you're interested in just asking some really detailed or specific questions, maybe about your sector, windows and doors, HVAC or insulation, we have the opportunity for that. So again, feel free to chime in the chat or raise your hand and um, we'll just move into a little bit more of a casual time. So I'm just gonna pass it back to Jovan and we'll see where the next questions take us. Perfect, uh, thanks Tanya. Um, I'll start with a, a question that was not answered in the chat and I think Grant, uh, this one's going to you. Uh, Carl McLean asks, they're going through the training process to be able to offer clean DC rebates. Can we sell these jobs um, even though they're not on the list yet for Windows installation? Um, it, it depends on the program slightly, Jovan. Um, the income qualified program does require you to be registered as an income qualified contractor to to promote that offer so we would ask them to reach out to the income qualified program get registered and also become an hpcn member the general program currently does not require you to become be an hpcn member so for our general rebates um to to homeowners without income qualified requirements you can go ahead and install those programs because we do not require you to be a hpcn or prc member um but that will be coming in the future so we recommend you get jump through the hoops and get listed perfect thank you grant uh meredith i see you have your hand up uh hi i just want uh to say to the program partners who are on um, that I, I imagine that these programs have been as challenging and sometimes as frustrating as you for they have as they have been for us as contractors and some of the customers. But uh, on the whole, I just uh, wanted to say that my experience has been that um, all of the programs uh, have been very responsive uh, to feedback from, uh, from myself and others in the industry. 
um, and I see program changes that are happening in response. So um, I think people often give you the bad news and the good news is that I think the rebate programs are working. Um, I wish they worked more and more people were, uh, were registered to deliver the work because um, we can't possibly meet the demand. But um, I think you guys are doing a great job. That's really all I wanted to say, thank you. Thank you, Meredith. Um, any other questions? I'm not seeing any additional questions in the chat at this point. I, I don't see any hands raised. We do have the opportunity if, for instance, uh, oh, there's a question from Patrick. Um, he's asking, um, do HPCN requirements also apply to MERBs? Uh, Patrick, I can clarify that quickly that HPCN requirements apply to existing homes, single family dwellings only. And I'm just looking at our questions. I think I think we've covered everything that was um, posted, Tanya. And in terms of uh, in terms of breakout rooms, we also have that option. For instance, if you're a, a Windows installer and you'd like uh, Windows and door specific information on HPS on HPCN or the income qualified program, we can make that happen. Or we could continue this open format and asking questions as needed. Maybe I'll jump in here, go just a little bit rogue since we're doing an informal kind of networking and Q&A time. Um, Greg or others, do we have any questions now that we have folks on the line that we might be interested in hearing from them? I, for one, am always interested in hearing more from, you know, boots on the ground. How are things going out there post crazy COVID supply chain issues? I have heard from a few folks that things were maybe starting to catch up a bit. Maybe that was just for some of the larger suppliers. So I personally would love to hear from anyone either in the chat or raise your hand, um, help us at the HPSC understand a little bit more about how your day-to-day -day is. Are there supply chain issues, labor shortages? Love to, to be filled in a little bit from your perspectives on that. And um, in the meantime, um, Grant, maybe a question for you from Kevin. Um, in their area, usually temperatures dip to negative 35, so fossil fuel or, or electric baseboards must be used as secondary heat. Do they qualify for rebates? Yeah, thanks. Good question. Um, uh, we do have rebates for dual fuel uh, systems or hybrid heat pumps that are matched with a furnace. Um, so the heat pump will be required to heat down to a certain set temperature and then the furnace can take over and manage the heat load down to that cold minus 35 degree temperature and as well if the system is an AHRI certified system you can install it with electric backup as well um, that electric backup it can be built directly into the, um, the heat pump system and be automated at the same time so good question and yes we do have opportunities for those backup systems in our program. Perfect, thank you. Um, uh, I also recognize that there are, um, presently we have uh, organizations which have a number of crews, uh, a large number of employees. Uh, maybe I'll take an opportunity to put Greg on the spot here uh, to outline, Greg, um, what one-on-one, -on -one, um, uh, if you could outline the one-on-one -on -one sessions that are available for organizations to connect with you and learn, how could they get started with maybe one person and then build it up from there? Yeah, uh, thank you, Joe. And there's a couple of things that we've been doing in the past that have worked really, really well to support um, the industry going through this process. Because we know in some cases you may have 30, 50 or 100 or more employees that need to go through this. So the re reality of having 50 people go through it at one time, it's just not there. So we've been able to break it down a little bit and say to contractors, all right, so let's go region by region. Or if you've got you know five crews in one city, 
Let's start with a main crew. Let's start with a main person. Get that person through the process. Let's guide and help them through it. And if it, if you know, in some cases, it's been some handholding. And and I don't mean to say negative because it's not. It's it's about additional support. Really, is what it is. So we'll set up um, schedules and guidelines. We'll work with individuals to get through at least to get a crew started and through the process. And it's been really successful with the uh, companies we've started this with because, you know, the the key thing is we say, we'll help you, we'll get started, and let's go through this together. But, you know, we, we have to have a commitment that more people will go through. And, you know, every company we've started to do this with have, have put their hands up and said, yeah, I'm in. And they've continued to add additional employees as and when they can. And, you know, the key thing with that too is, as the employees go through and you've completed the entire process, you can submit for reimbursement for those employees that have completed it. It's not a one and done process, right? So some companies are worried that, you know, I've submitted my reimbursement, you can't do any more. But the fact is, if you want to do it every two weeks or every month, feel free, that's up to you. But um, we do open the door to Joe's point to work with larger companies or maybe companies that are in various regions. And, um, you know, it's, it's about creating uh, a partnership and support as opposed to roadblock. So we're also eager to hear about feedback on this too. And, you know, uh, what works best for the industry is what works best for us. It's just that simple. Perfect. Thank you, Greg. Um, and maybe um, I know we, we get this question from our HVAC contractors a lot around availability of um, training spots for tech or HRAI courses. Greg, if, um, if you don't mind me putting you on the spot, if you can share some of the latest updates on that as well. Maybe look no, at it. Yeah, not, not at all. So, you know, we started hearing about this first November of 2021 that some of the courses were getting filled up with uh, HVAC contractors. And so, you know, we reached out to partners uh, for an example, I use Tech just as an example because I know the courses off the top of my head. We reached out to Tech and said, hey, can you open up some more courses for us? We have a lot of contractors coming through. And they added night courses, weekend courses. They added another instructor. It completely changed the game. So we're hearing the same thing about May. We heard that May is getting filled. I had a chat with Isabel from Tech the other day. She confirmed that they added another course in May. And they opened up a couple more spots in some of the existing courses. So, you know, at any time, if if anybody's finding that access to the courses that they need to do, whether it's through HRAI or TACO or FNBC or whatever the case may be, is challenging, reach out. Uh, you know, we're, we have really good relationships and good partners, partnerships with our uh, program partners out there who are working tirelessly to help get contractors through this process. Perfect. Thank you, Greg. Um, another query uh, that popped up prior to our uh, uh, prior to our forum was around um, organizations that are less that have had less than three years in the business. So Tanya, if you don't mind, um, it, maybe outline the process of um, how do we uh, how do we one qualify organizations that are that have been in the business for less than three years, and um, and 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 what are some of the expectations? Yeah, definitely. So just to provide the context that all of the requirements for joining the HPCN were developed by industry representatives in our sector councils. So they were the ones that suggested that we should have a minimum of three years business experience in order to participate in the HPCN. However, they recognize that they also don't want this to be a deterrent to new businesses. Um, and when we say new, we mean Folks that have experience in the industry, they're qualified to be working in the industry. It's just that they themselves have maybe started a new business or branched off from a new business. Um, so for those folks, we wanted to make sure there were still opportunities for them to participate while maintaining a high level of, of quality that the sector councils wanted. So if you are a business that's been operating for three plus years, you go through a standard registration and participation process. If you're under three years, we just take a little more time when reviewing the application to make sure that we as the HPSC have done our due diligence since you are a newer business. So we might do additional reference checks. We might reach out to additional industry partners to ask their experience working with this newer company. And then we will uh, initiate um, a 
uh, a more robust contractor management protocol. So as an example, if you're a business with over three years, we might say, okay, every X months, we're going to review your qualifications or your business documents. And if you're a younger company, we would increase the frequency of that. And we would maybe go deeper into checking those qualifications and checking with our partners. So um, we know that's that's slightly ambiguous. Um, if you have any questions or concerns about your specific company, feel free to give us a call. Greg is a great starting point to ask those questions, uh, but hopefully that provides a bit more info. Perfect. Yeah, what we are realizing is in a lot of these cases, we have a contractor who's been in the sector for 15, 20, 30 years, but then goes on to open up their own business. So we make, we make sure that that experience is recognized and, um, and, and we deal with them in a way that works for our criteria as well. Um, Glenn, I can confirm that um, HPC and HVAC contractors are required to take the heat loss, heat gains calculations course, either from TECA or from HRA. And Jovan, I just want to call attention. We have a, a few questions that go back to, to Kevin's question there. Do you see that? Or, um... He says, sometimes we have temperatures in our area that dip below minus 35. So fossil fuel or electric baseboards must be used as secondary heat. Do our customers qualify for rebates? Yeah, we've already answered that. Oh, we did. <laughs> My apologies. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, we do have a question from Dave Lewis from BC Hydro. Um, if they can verify how the budget for rebate programs is determined and approved. And I think Dave is asking about the BCUC rate application process. Uh, Carrie, Ooh, putting me in the putting me in the hot seat here. Um, so, Dave, to answer your question, um, you know we have to put together plans and determine budgets, and those have to obviously get approved. They have to meet cost effectiveness tests, and they have to get uh, then be submitted to BCUC for approval. We work on three year planning cycles. So, you know, outside of that information, that's outside of my scope of work and my ability to answer that question, but um, we can follow up with you afterwards and have a further conversation around that. Okay, thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I just think for future, you know, certainty and longevity, if, if that's something we could strategically look at um, from maybe a board level even saying, you know, how, how what is the process? Is it a possibility? Um, and if it is, then, Maybe we can um, see if that's something we want to pursue. Sure. Yeah, I can. I can take that feedback um, to to the people who get to make that decision, um, and for them to to consider that. But um, yeah, we we can follow up with you afterwards as well. Great. Thank you. Yep. Um, Molly, I, I see. You have a question. If you can use the Linux Manual J for heat loss heat gain calculation program for clean DC rebates. Um, I can I can maybe come at it from HPCN perspective. You know, part of the income qualified program, you are required to be a HPCN member for HVAC, and part of that requirement is to complete the principal removing air and heat loss heat, heat loss heat gain courses from either TECA or HRAI. Grant, uh, anything else that you wanted to add to that? Yeah, those courses are great, but um, the manual J technique is an acceptable method. We'll accept the manual J or the F280 Canadian uh, version. So either of the, those two models will work for our heat load calculations. Thanks. And Grant, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, request you to respond to Kevin's question as well. Uh, any rebates for switching from a 80% gas-fired gas boiler to high efficient boilers um, or combi boilers and water heaters, maybe open it up to Fortis PC as well. Yeah, I was, I'm going to ask Sarah Colton to jump in on this one. Sorry, <laughs> I couldn't unmute myself. Um, I, I think that with the dual fuel system, they should be applying for the space heating system that is the primary rebate, which would generally be the heat pump in that case. Sarah, I think the question is, is if you have an 80% efficient gas fired boiler and the customer wants to go to a oh. more efficient boiler? Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
the rebate is for a minimum 94% boiler. And then there's also the combination system, which is an option. So there's combi boilers, um, which will do both the um, primary space heating and primary water heating. Um, and then um, there's also the type two combination boilers, which is um, a standard boiler with an indirect tank and the um, inverse is the type three, which we have um, the tankless water heater working with an air handler. Those do need to be systems tested in combination. Um, and the rebate for combination systems is $1,200 and they do qualify for the $300 tail grade bonus. So those are the options for those customers. Perfect. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and I know we're getting close to wrapping up. Um, maybe, um, um, maybe one more item um, for, for uh, Greg Bloom here. Um, act actually, before we do that, Tanya, can I request you to maybe bring up the chart uh, which outlines um, which rebate requirements require HPCN and maybe provide some examples of which rebates do not? I think, uh, I think we've had that question a few times. Yes, absolutely. So I'm going to just uh, change the screen that I'm sharing, and I'm going to be sharing a visual that comes right from our website. And um, I'll explain a little bit more about where to find that. So Jovan, just give me a thumbs up, please, if you can see that chart in front of you. Awesome. Yep. So this is a chart of the programs that require HPCN membership, and I'll just mention some examples of ones that do not. So we've already heard from each of these representatives today. We have the Clean BC Better Homes Income Qualified Offer, and then we have the just general Clean BC Better Homes rebates, as well as the BC Hydro and Fortis BC rebates. And those ones fall under the Clean BC Better Homes and Home Renovation Rebate Programs. So we have covered these first four lines today in great detail. And then Fortis also let us know a little bit about their Income Qualified Rebate Program as well. So you can see on the right hand side that it summarizes for each program from each provider that there are certain rebate types. So for example, income qualified, you must be an HPCN member to access those rebates. And then for the rest of them, I'll just summarize what we're seeing here, which is uh, starting July 1st, it will be mandatory for heat pumps to be an HPCN member. And then it's already mandatory for insulation rebates to be a program registered contractor. So how we've just written out this table is letting you know that um, come November 1st, you will have to be an HPCN member. It's already mandatory to be a PRC member. The PRC program is simply transitioning to the HPCN. So if you're looking to get insulation rebates, the quick answer is you need to get signed up for us if you're not already eligible. And then for heat pumps, you have until July 1st. So we know that even a summary table like this can maybe still be a little confusing. And that's why we wanna offer these types of Q&A opportunities. You can always reach out and let us know. If you're wondering where to find this information, again, we will follow up with the link. But just so you're aware, our regular website, homeperformance.ca, um, slash contractor network has an overview here. And then when you click looking for more detailed information, it opens up in this new section of our website where we put all of the details in there. So if you haven't seen this before and it um, looks like a useful resource to you, then keep an eye out in the follow-up email for a link to that resource. Yeah, I think we have the link embedded in the chat as well. Um, awesome. and, and maybe going over to Greg before we uh, move towards wrapping up the session. Greg, we've had some confusion from contractors over business licenses and service territory. Could you maybe clarify and specify our criteria and requirements? Yeah, absolutely. So a couple of key differences from previous programs to the current program with HPCN is um, you must have a business license to work in each city, town, or municipality that you want to be listed in. And, uh, you know, we kind of came to that conclusion, frankly, by reaching out to cities, towns, and municipalities all over BC and saying, hey, clarify for me. If I'm coming to install windows or do insulation or a heat pump. Technically, do I have to have a business license to work in your city, town, and municipality? Every single one overwhelmingly said, absolutely, you do. So we're just following... Um, 
lawful guidelines at the very least. But keep in mind, at the same time, uh, most areas offer intercommunity, intercity, um, intermunicipality licenses as well. So there's some great opportunities to broaden that without having to purchase licenses everywhere. And the other side of it too, when you're going through your registration, if you have only one license for one city, town, or municipality, and you work in others, start with one. Go through your registration process. You can always add other cities, towns, municipalities, licenses. Then we can always add additional cities, towns, municipalities that you could be listed in and then be found in the search tool under as well. And that's it for me. Thank you, Jordan. Perfect. Thank you for, for that, Greg. Yeah, just as part of our um, final reviews, we do verify if your business license that you've uploaded or licenses that you've uploaded align with the service territory or the area um, that you've outlined that you service um, in, in the step one of our process. Um, and I think with that, we're coming to the end of this session. Uh, Tanya, I'll turn it over to you for um, a formal closing. Great, thanks Jovan, and thanks to the HPSC team and our presenters once again. Um, we're really grateful for those who were able to join us, whether you've been on since 9 a.m. or you were popping in and out, thank you so much. Uh, if you haven't heard me say it, just to reiterate, we will be sending a follow-up email to all registrants, which will include a link to the live recording. It will include any links that we mentioned today. And we also try and write out a bit of a transcript with the Q&A. So if you don't have time to listen, you can kind of get some quick ones. Um, please check your spam folder if you don't receive an email within the next couple of days. And if you do see us in your spam folder, we encourage you to add us to your safe senders list so that in the future we end up in your inbox. So with that, uh, if anyone has any last minute questions, feel free to type them in the chat and we will follow up by email. Um, we have all of your emails since you registered for the event. So thank you again. And we have some kudos that have gone out in the chat to our program partners. So thank you for passing those along as well. We hope you all have a great rest of your day and we look forward to staying in touch or getting to know you better if you're new to the HPSE. Thanks everyone.